So you're probably wondering whether this phone is worth buying or you're looking at this phone and looking at what it even has to offer. Well, we have taken the time to put this device through as many tests as possible. And in this video, I will share my thoughts about the Vivo Y22. If you're new to the channel, welcome. And if you're returning, welcome back. Do hit that like button so more people can get to see the analysis that we'll be sharing about this phone in this video. Without further ado, let's get to it. As always, we'll kick things off with what this device has to offer right out of the box. For the Vivo Y22, the device is at the very top of the box, but we'll come back to that. Removing the first layer divider, we get the traditional clear phone case, a quick start guide, warranty card, SIM ejector tool, type C charging cable, and we get the 18 watt charging brick. And that is all that comes in the box of the Y22. Nothing out of the ordinary. Let us now get to the device itself. Now taking the plastic wrap off of this device reveals this amazing design. I sometimes wish that some of the bigger smartphone brands could be this adventurous and you know bring this type of design to us um but i don't think we're going to see that anytime soon unless maybe it's like a very special edition have you guys noticed that a lot of recently released smartphones especially the mid-range ones have this flair of designing the back of the phone to have very striking elements at first glance think of the previous vivo uh, v25 which we did uh, on this channel that one writes anything under the sun think of the mondrian which changes from white to a color design under the sun think of the nothing phone with its lighting and all of that design just to name a few we got our review unit in this starlit blue color and it has these patterns all over the back which animates when it moves and it just looks nice like I, I really like how this looks. The back of the Vivo Y22 is a plastic build that Vivo says is scratch resistant and fingerprint resistant. We are yet to use it um, long enough to figure out just how scratch resistant this is. But um, as far as the fingerprints go, I did not find any smudges on this guy with multiple touches, except maybe in this camera region. But I like this matte finish on the back of the phone here. It feels quite light in the hand and the material and the plastic frame makes it feel holistic. I like that the edges on the back here where your hands will be resting most of the time don't feel very sharp that they are piercing into your hands as if you know there's a knife hold, yeah, that you're holding. Um, you know just like some very very important flagship phones. So if you decide to use your phone without a case um, you will not have any issues here. By the way speaking of cases um, this is the case that this phone comes in and you see when I put it on here it still preserves this um, shiny design at the back so if you really like to show off and you don't want to cover your phone too much but still protect your phone um, the plastic case that comes straight out of the box is very good for you to just slap it on the phone I mean I think it looks cool. All right, let's now get to what this device can actually do. Starting off with the display, and on paper, this is a 6.5 inch LCD display with a resolution of 720 by 1612 pixels. In 2022, these are not the most impressive display features on the market. Um, for a device in this price range, which we'll talk about later in this video, it would definitely have been nice to see this phone come with an AMOLED display, especially at that price point, and at least a 1080p display. Now, the specs aside, streaming content across different platforms was just as good as the spec offerings. So let's just let's just hop into YouTube right now. So if you're watching videos on YouTube, for instance, this is my um, video here on the MT review. I think I need to put the. Oh wow! You can actually stream 4K. <laughs> Are you kidding me? If you're watching videos, you see that you can set the quality to be as high as 4K if that is available for the you know videos you're watching. Now, while this is the case, I found that when I tried to stream 4K content, the video started dropping frames and lagging. Streaming was smoothest at 1080p, but having a 720p LCD display here was quite evident despite viewing at the higher resolution. And how do I set it up? Inside the box, the first thing we get is the modem. Okay, let's talk about performance. First off, the Vivo Y22 is powered by MediaTek's G85 chipset running on Vivo's FonTouch OS 12 and Android 12. The storage here is 64 gigabytes while the RAM is 4 gigabytes and you can extend your RAM with another 4 gigabytes where it takes additional RAM 
from your storage space, making you have a total of 8 gigs of RAM. Once again, not the most mind-blowing specs that you find on a smartphone, but it's pretty common to find these kinds of specs in budget devices like this. It's definitely not designed for people who want to play heavy duty games. Uh, as always, uh, we played Call of Duty here in the studio and the first thing that we noticed was that by default, Call of Duty will set the graphics to low and the frame rates will be set as medium. At this setting, the game will play pretty smoothly and the graphics will not look as fascinating and you know in this setting as many high-end devices and i decided to increase the graphics settings and i saw that cod does not allow this device to go to the higher setting higher than medium graphics at least so there is no shock here and you are also limited at the high frame rate setting so i played these highest settings available to this device and it was good for the most part during very intense moments on screen i caught the y22 dropping some frames and experiencing a little bit of lag. If you would like a completely seamless gaming experience, then you have to play with the Follocom default graphic settings. The Vivo Y22 comes with a pretty impressive battery of 5,000 milliamp hours. Um, this is just about as big as, as as big of a battery as you can get on a standard smartphone, and it performs very well too on the Y22. While the device had a lot of standby time because um, we didn't use it for heavy stuff. The battery lasted more than three days on a single charge. I occasionally did some TikTok scrolling and took some pictures, played games, a few games here, and the battery performance was good through all this. About 30 minutes of gaming barely affected this device's battery. As for the charging, the Y22 comes with uh, an 18 watt charger. This charger took more than two hours to go from zero to 100%. So make of that what you will. So what can the Vivo Y22 capture? On paper, you're getting one 50 megapixel camera and a second two megapixel camera that takes macro shots. The selfie camera on here is eight megapixels and the selfie images with this device, they looked good in good lighting, in a studio lighting like this. And in portrait mode, you should get a decent background blur. I went out to grab something from my favorite spot and I took a picture of the, the food and the normal image looked okay. And the 50 megapixel image basically packed in more resolution and only got higher in sharpness and file size. It was three times more in terms of file size. What I thought was fair was the macro shots actually. Although coming in at two megapixels, which is understandable, you won't get the highest resolution. You still get these details here and there, but I must stress that to get good shots, you will certainly require a bright or well-lit environment. Just go under the sun, I guess. I then went to Palms um, ShopRite to grab some groceries, but I stopped to take some photos outside. At 1x, 5x, and all the way up to 10x, the logo still retained some quality. The shots looked detailed. One thing I noticed too was that in even lighting, there was some level of desaturation with the colors, with the color red especially. It wasn't always the case though, as I noticed it could also get punchy too, um, when you set it just right. So you might have to fiddle a bit to take a good picture. Still, indoors, when I tried zooming, I noticed some fuzziness around the edges of text. I thought that the selfie video could have been better actually on here. The video was overexposed in this sample footage that you can see here. You will notice that in the colors of the objects in the background, since this camera tries to expose for your face. This is a bit toned down on the back camera, especially outdoors. Night mode with the rear camera urges you to use a tripod. However, I thought that the shots didn't truly really feel different from the regular setting. I like that you've got a front facing screen flash so that you can be lit at night. And here is the difference between a shot that has the litness and the one without the front facing screen flash. You can obviously see the difference in quality here. All in all, while I think this is not the most advanced device with regards to specs that money can buy, it could be a great device for a certain category of users. At the price of 115,900 Naira or $154, yes, this is definitely a device for a certain type of crowd. Many smartphone buyers may not want to get something ultra high end. Maybe you want to use this device for WhatsApp or social media like Instagram, and maybe you just want to type stuff, text, 
um, this will work well and beyond well for you, especially when you have that 5,000 milliamp hour battery. On the flip side, while the camera produces good results in good lighting, it can be limiting for a few content producers or people that want to take a lot of video, you want to take a lot of media, and you want to have them shared across social media. But I suggest that you watch this video on the Vivo V25. I'll see you in that one.